Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek at Origins 2017. I'm sitting down with Randall Bills from Catalyst Game Labs, and you brought us Shadowrun Zero Day. Correct. So Shadowrun Zero Day is obviously set within Shadowrun, which is our dystopian fantasy cyberpunk universe. Uh, and this is a two-player. Get that on a T-shirt. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. <laughs> Uh, where man meets magic and machine, still one of my all-time favorite taglines for a universe. That is a universe. great tagline. <laughs> so it is a two-player hacking game. So within the Shadowrun parlance, it's uh, their deckers is what they're called there. <clears throat> so a zero-day attack, for those that don't know, is when a corporation releases new software uh, and the hackers immediately go at it and find a vulnerability because, you know, software. So in this game, what you're going to be doing is the goal is to score at least three different corporations. These are mega corporations. Uh, and as soon as that happens, the game is done and you're going to score up the points. Okay? And the way you do that is on your turn. So you'd have a selection of cards. You'd have a hand of cards. Not all of them, obviously, but that's okay. <laughs> you'd have a selection of cards. And then <clears throat> these right here are the countermeasures. You are using the tools in your hands to try to circumnavigate the countermeasures to get onto the Mega Corporation cards. You also do score countermeasures when you defeat them because you're up in your rep that, hey, I took that bad boy down, <laughs> okay? You also have various marks, uh, data tokens along the way and data cards. So on my turn, I would be able to play any number of tools, but they must be the same tool, okay? So in this instance, if I played a red, because that's the only red card I have, that's okay. I would then take a mark token and I would put it on one of the red cards, okay? If I had had two purples and I played that instead, I could then take two, only put it on the purple because that's the only one that's out there, okay? If I get a number up to seven, so let's go ahead and yeah, say, say you I had on there. three purples. So you had played three purples out there and I played those two, and let's say I had I played two more on a subsequent turn, that would then get seven, we would then score, okay? So I would get the card in the token, however you, because you were in there as well, you would get one of these data cards. And the reason that's important is these tokens do not score without a data card. Hmm. So then on another turn, you may purposely lose you may set it up to lose to get the data card. I'm handing you points, but I might get more points on my side. So there's times when you're setting yourself up actually to lose to try to come out better on the other end, okay? So, uh, and then once this is gone, you would immediately roll a new card out, okay? Now, there are two ways to get past the countermeasures onto the Mega Corporation cards. One is vulnerabilities, okay? If I had <coughs> tools and there are no colors that correspond in the countermeasures, I immediately slipped past them because, ah. you know, software zero day. Uh, I would then be able to put these on whichever one I want. Okay, let's go ahead and say I wanted to put it on there. That's the first way. The second way is called overflow. So let's come back here. Let's say these are the number of tokens on here. If I played two of these, I would then have two. One would go on it, to one would put it down. Enough. Now one more goes on and I put it wherever I want, okay? And then like I said, once these fill up just like this, you have the value you need to hit in marks and then this would actually be the scoring at the end of the game. Uh, and then as I mentioned before, you're getting these tokens along the way. These tokens are really great, but currently there is nothing out here that actually has them. So then you're gonna be looking, are there any that have them? And then obviously as you're grabbing them, more and more are coming out. And that's when the, the tactic of sometimes it's gonna be a little better to lose right. or go for the lower number card that has the token that gives you that tactic. So there's, there's multiple paths to victory with it. It's maybe a 20 minute game, wow. plays yeah. super fast, lots of good interaction. So you can just churn through a couple of games. As, you know, again, it's a pretty small box. You can I was gonna say, and so, wait and churn through a couple of games in one sitting. And thematically, both in art and rules, still really gives you that a nice essence of, of oh, Shadowrun. Oh, oh, absolutely. These cards in particular, I just, yeah. I, I had this, I had one of these pieces of art as my desktop for months and months because it's just <laughs> what a great idea. The, the artist did just a brilliant job at really bringing out a cool flavor in the art as well. Yeah, one. yeah. So if you guys want to check that out, uh, that I mean, we've if you. Right now, Randall, 
essentially taught the entire game yep. in the space of this video, so that's how fast it is to learn. That's how fast it is. This is Shadowrun Zero Day, which is the two-player version, uh, okay. two-player game from Catalyst Game Labs. Yep, and, and it'll be out, at, should be out at the end of July. It's on a boat now. We were just missed half of copies here oh. at Origins by a couple of days, so that's that's how it happens. <laughs> yeah, but it should be end of July, if nothing else, certainly in August, and obviously at Gen Con. Okay. Randall, thank you so much. Thank you.